Hey guys, welcome to Four Kids in a Farm. My name is Aaron and today we're gonna to talk about how we start seeds on our farm. We here at Four Kids in a Farm, we found a few things, a few tips, a few strategies that if you implement them will help you to be a little bit more successful in your seed starting. Nothing's rocket science here, just a couple principles that will help you to be a little bit more successful. Really the truth about starting seeds is there's hundred ways to start seeds. Uh, there's different containers, there's different substrates, there's different techniques. Do you use a heat mat? Do you not? If you go on a Facebook page, everybody has an opinion of how you should start seeds. One thing that we know for sure is that you can't sprout seeds that you don't sow. Is that the right way to say that? If you don't put them in the ground, they're not going to grow. Um, so just doing it is probably the first step into you having success. Just get some seeds, find some dirt, no matter what it is, and put those seeds in them. If it's all that you have, it's all that you can afford, nobody's going to fault you for that. One of the first steps in having a successful seed starting experience is the seeds. I mean, I, I know that might seem obvious, but there are hundreds of seed companies out there. If you're new to our channel, um, we use Haas Tool seeds. We're so enamored with Haas Tools. They're just high quality, extremely high germination rate, and the best customer service in our opinion. So we'll put our link to Haas Tools below. If you click on that link, it'll bring you to Haas Tools website. If you use our link and buy some seeds, we do get paid a little bit through their affiliation program. So we appreciate it. That goes directly to the farm and to improving our own garden. It's no cost to you. So please click that link below and go there. You will be inspired and impressed with their array of seeds and the germination rate is just unprecedented. There are other seed companies that are doing really, really good things. Um, but if you're interested in the most success in growing your own food, we have to recommend Haas Tools. It's hands down just the best uh, seed company out there. So. Today we're going to be planting a lot of spring and summer vegetables, lots of tomatoes, lots of peppers lots of cucumbers um, and squash. Um, we're gonna be putting those into our seed tray, which leads me to the most indestructible seed tray that you can probably ever buy. This is a Haas Tool 162 cell seed tray. Um, it's amazing. Our kids have stood on it. I probably could stand on it. You can chuck this, you can throw this. This will last you for decades, if not for your whole life you may be putting this in your will for your kids. And if you can see, but it's got this triangular shape, it trains the roots to grow downward. So when you pull these out, roots are going down. They're already in the direction that you want them to go when you plant them. Now, I will show you how we fill this up with our seed starting mix that we get from our local nursery. These are a little expensive. They're like $29.99 right now. You can buy them in bulk, but you also got to think about how long you're gonna be having this thing. A lot of other seed trays are easy to use. Those little jiffy pots are really, really easy to use. You can get those at your local big box store. You know, those work well too, but this is what we recommend and this is what we use on our farm. By the way, also link below, follow that over to Haas Tools. You can get them. Sometimes they're so popular that they're out of stock. At the time of you're watching this video, it may be out of stock. You can click a button on the bottom that they'll send you an email when it becomes in stock again. So Haas Tools through the whole coronavirus deal has always been sending seeds. They've always been open for business. Just a, an amazing company. Next step in successful seed starting is a seed starting mix. Okay. This is kind of our California brand. EB Stone, it's organic. Um, we get this from our local garden center. Really easy to source. 
there's a couple differences between seed starter and like a normal potting mix. Seed starter is kiln dried, so it gets rid of the moisture, which gets rid of fungus, bacteria, viruses in the soil. When you're starting out your seeds, you want a sterile medium, essentially. You don't want fungus from last year or fungus from a bag that's been sitting around in a warehouse for months and months on end. So make sure you start with the seed starting mix. Other thing is it's really, really fine. There's lots of really good ingredients in there. It's not clumpy, which for your seeds, you want it light and airy. So once your seed sprouts and it's growing those roots, it has the best opportunity to grow. If all you have is regular dirt or you make your own mixes, that's totally fine too. Like I said, this isn't rocket science. This is just what we do. You starting seeds in any container with any soil is going to be better than you starting no seeds. So I know people have special mixes. These bags of soil are not too expensive. Um, one of these bags will do probably six trays of seed starting. So it's not a crazy expense for us to have really good quality seed starts. Okay, guys, to start your seeds, um, I've got one of these. This is a cement mixing tub we use these all over the farm i'm going to use this to collect any oops extra seed starting soil that i'm putting in here i'm really just going to load this up kind of pack it in this can be a really big mess uh, but having this kind of collects that extra seed starting mix so you can use it for the next round Having the cement tray makes it so I don't really have to be so tedious because like I said, this can be a mess. Just use what you got. You can see how light and fluffy this is. Um, I'm just gonna kind of wipe it all over this thing. Pack it down in some places because it really is just really fluffy peat moss. I do want to wipe some of this away so that I can actually see the individual trays. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be poking blind. Okay, so now that you're done there, um, I'm going to take this over. I'm going to spray it down really good because this stuff is bone dry. I'm going to spray it down with a little sprayer, bring it back here, and then I'll make those little divots and I'll show you how we put the seeds in each one of these. So this is how it looks after it gets wet. I'm going to just go through and kind of push down each one of these cells with my fingers so that I have a reservoir for a seed. A lot of people use a pencil or something like that. You can use whatever you have handy. It's not a big deal here. You just want to make something that's deep enough to hold the seed. And then afterwards, I'm going to go over and just sprinkle another bunch of that seed mix over the top to cover it um, and then we'll we'll pat that down a little bit and then we'll get it wet again and then we'll be all ready to start our seeds so one thing i forgot to show you is it is important to label your seeds a lot of seeds look the same when they're sprouting so do yourself a favor and label it you can use popsicle sticks you can use anything we like to use little painter's tape we put that across the whole thing and we can write on it with the sharpie makes things pretty easy just it's important to, to stay organized so that you don't have to play some kind of guessing game of what seedling is what once they start sprouting
One of the mistakes that we make all the time is overwatering our seedlings. They need kind of that perfect amount, not too much, not too little. I thought I got that. General rule of thumb is once you're starting to see the top of the soil kind of get dry and crusty, that's when the seedling needs new water. We've watered twice a day. That's too much because it leaches out a lot of the nutrients that those little seedlings need. So just be careful um, and don't get too eager. We want to baby them too much, but they will grow. They will grow if you follow these principles. Once they're tucked into their little fluffy moist beds, then we can put them under lights. Now, it depends where you are, what time of season it is, how cold it is, how warm it is outside, how you should treat these seedlings after you've just initially planted them. If it's freezing cold, uh, you're gonna bring them inside. You're gonna put them under grow lights, something like this. If you have a greenhouse, you're gonna use that. If you live in a very temperate, warm area, you might not have to use these at all. Benefit of having the grow lights is that you keep light on them 24 seven. They're not out in the elements and so they're not drying out. They're not getting too wet. They're just staying. The environment is right for the seedlings. And this is not a expensive setup. We got these on Amazon. We got some at Costco. And the cool thing about them is they're very cheap. You need to get the 5,000 K lights. If you get less than that, then they're not gonna be able to put out enough light for these seedlings to grow. They're low energy, so you're not using a lot of money to run them, but you're getting better results with your seedlings in preparation for them to go out into the garden. So I'll put the link to these ones that we bought on Amazon below, but just know that you could get them at Walmart, you could get them at Costco, you Target, wherever you like to shop, they exist everywhere. After you've got all this set up, the only thing you have to do is wait, be patient, don't overwater, and then pretty soon you'll have seedlings. Let me show you what we do have going under these lights. Uh, we've got some cabbage, cabbage, harmony butter lettuce. We've got some Avenger spinach, some collards, and some more lettuce. And then down here, we've got some, some broccolis and what else we got? Cauliflower, more broccoli, and uh, over here, kohlrabi. <laughs> Somebody got a little fancy with this seed tray. It's probably Rachel. So these will have a few more days, maybe a week um, underneath these grow lights, and then we'll start putting them outside. This is 162 times three. We've got tons of seedlings going on here. And most of these are our final attempt at cold winter crops this year. Once these ones have grown big enough that we can kick them out, I'll put the, the ones that I just started today, our warm season vegetables under there and that way they can get going while these ones will go in the ground. We don't take this down during the off season. We're running this all the time. As we're growing things, you know, this is it's a very cheap, easy setup. It's only special because it works really well. It's not special because it looks professional. I promise if we can do this, you guys can do this. So let's review. Number one, get some great seeds. We love Haas Tools, there are other good companies. Number two, Get good seedling trays, ones that you'll use over and over. Hostels has some, those links are below. Click on those links, it helps us out just a little bit and we appreciate you for clicking on those links. Make sure you get some good seed starter mix. Potting soil will do fine, but it's too clumpy and damp and there could be molds and bacteria in there. So get a seedling mix, you'll have better results. Next, put them under lights. Take love and care wherever you are in the world, depending on your weather, make sure that these stay at a normal temperature. Putting them under light, watering them just enough, not too much, will give you such good results. We here at Four Kids on a Farm, we hope you gardening success in all your endeavors. We hope you grow lots of food. Leave us some comments, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.